Justice Sotomayor? This would be the first time in the Court's history, correct, that it would say that a business open to the public, as this petitioner has said it is, that it's open, a commercial business open to the public, serving the public, that it could refuse to serve a customer based on race, sex, religion, uh, or sexual orientation, correct? Yes. King? Justice Gorsuch? Good morning, Mr. Olson. Is it still morning? <laughs> uh, just barely. <laughs> I must not feel like it's standing where you are. I'm here all day, Justice. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, it, we, we, we've had some discussion about whether websites are speech or whether they are some, a service off the shelf. And I, 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 like a lot of my colleagues, don't profess to know much about this. But I do know that there are some stipulations that you made in paragraphs 81, 82, 83, which say that this is customized, personalized, an expressive activity in each and every circumstance. What do we do about that from your perspective? Don't we have to take that as given? Yes, but it doesn't change the analysis, I think. Why not? Because I do see a, a thing very different if I put a cake on display, it's been made, it is what it is, or a website that you can then go customize yourself, and another thing to commission an expressive activity oh. and, and, and to require somebody to create an expression. Those are two different things, analytically in our law. So help me out. Well, I, I think along the stipulations, we need to look at the specific relief that the company seeks. But those are the stipulations. No, they are the stipulations. Yeah. And the specific relief that the company seeks is the ability to turn away every single same-sex customer. Well, they can ask for what they want. What they get might be another thing, Mr. Olson. Uh, but how we analyze the case depends upon those stipulations. Of course it does. Okay. And, and Okay. And then um, separately, um, I, I, I was intrigued by your answer before my friends at the Tenth Circuit about freelance writers and people like that and the notion that Colorado could compel, for example, an individual to write a speech or a press release on behalf of, say, a religious entity with whom he or she disagrees. Does, does every uh, press release writer, freelance writer, have to write a press release for the Church of Scientology, say, even though the beliefs of that institution may be inimical to the person? Not at all. And, and I admit I don't have firmly in mind the exact contours of my answer a couple of years ago to the Tenth Circuit, but I will tell you what Colorado law says, which is you, a freelance writer may or may not be a public accountant. Well, let's, let's assume they, they are, be, okay. under your definition, pretty broad, very different than the historical understanding of public accommodation, but we've gone over that. So, so assuming away that hard part of the question, um, getting to, to what limitations, all that Colorado law requires is that if you choose to offer a service to someone, you need to offer that service to I to offer to write press releases for anyone. It's not a who, but it is a what. And the what is, I won't write a press release that expresses religious views or um, that I disagree with. Well, I think certainly a, a, a freelance writer who is a public accommodation could say, I don't write press releases that express religious views, full stop. I won't write that for anybody. Right, you, you can. No, 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 I'm, I'm happy to do it, generally speaking, but just not ones I disagree with. There are many I would agree with across a wide variety of religious faiths. Um, but I'm not going to do it for some with whom I disagree. Well, well, even in that circumstance, what Colorado looks to is the service you actually provide, and you choose the service so long as you could say. So the I, answer I, is I, yes, Colorado would compel no, that person. No, the answer is no. Okay, because, why? Because Colorado could say, you as a, as a speechwriter could say, I write, uh, uh, you know, the religious speeches that I write touch on a few traditions that I have knowledge of, and I don't write speeches that touch on other knowledges. Well, but no, 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 it's not, not a, you're changing my hypothetical, well, Mr. Wilson, well, that I disagree with, that, okay. that I find offensive to my religious beliefs. That's the hypothetical. So long as you would sell that to everyone, not based on their religion, but you can define the contours of the product 
you can choose the contours of the product that you sell. But I'll call you, it, I call it speech, but you can call it a product if you well, want. <laughs> we'll call it speech. Uh, you, you can choose the content uh, of what you sell. You just can't what choose you say. who you sell to. Okay. Right? And so you could say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on these things, and, uh, but I need to sell that to everyone, even if the person who wants to buy it is a member of a religious faith that I disagree with. That, so that's I, will, fine. I will write a press release for many faiths and many belief systems, that are, cons but they have to be consistent with mine, and I won't do it if, if it offends my religious faith. Good to go. So long as you sell that to everybody. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. What's different about this case? Because, uh, if I'll just finish the question, I know you're already ready to answer it, but we have an individual who says she will sell and does sell to everyone, all manner of websites. And, but she won't sell a website that requires her to express a view about marriage that she finds offensive to her religious beliefs. What's the difference between the two cases I'm struggling to understand? The difference is, and again, looking at the specific relief the company seeks. For, is, put, put aside the specific relief the company seeks because it's up to courts to fashion relief. Yeah. So that's, that, that's not going to persuade so, me. Work on something that might. The difference is, is that that distinction, the, well, the, the company has chosen to say they want to provide wedding websites generally, and they will not provide Web, all manner of websites. They, well, the, 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 this individual will provide all manner of websites, just not one that celebrates, requires her to write something, words on a page, customizable, all the stuff you stipulated to, um, that celebrate a particular thing that she finds offends her religious beliefs. I, I still, I'm, I'm looking for the distinction between the two cases. One you say is okay, the other one not okay. Because the company, unlike our first example of the, the speechwriter, yeah. the company here says in no uncertain terms will they ever sell a company, a, a, a product or a service to a same-sex couple. No, what websites. they say is we will not sell to anyone, anyone. A, a message that I disagree with as a matter of religious faith, just as a speechwriter says, or the press release writer, the freelance writer says, I will not sell to anyone a speech that offends my religious beliefs. But here, they are defining their service by excluding someone based on that, their... That's their religious belief. Well, in Colorado... You can't change their religious belief, right? No, but... but well, to... And you protect religious beliefs under the statute, right? That is one of the protected characteristics, yes. in theory. And in practice. If it wasn't in practice, we had heard about it over, over the past several years, and, and my friend has pointed to no example where this has been applied. Mr. Phillips did go through a re-education training program pursuant to Colorado law, did he not, Mr. Olson? He, he went through a, a process that ensured he was familiar it with... It was a re-education program, right? It was not a re-education program. What do you Mr. call Phillips. it? It was a process to make sure he was familiar with Colorado law. Someone might be excused for calling that a re-education I strongly program. disagree, Justice Gorsuch. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Justice Gorsuch. So, counsel, um, we, we've spoken a little bit about how Colorado has handled this compelled speech question differently with respect to different messages, um, some that it prefers, others that it dislikes. I'm curious how other states have dealt with this conundrum um, besides Colorado and how you, which ones of those you think we should take account of. 20 states filed an amicus brief in support of Ms. Smith and expressed to this court that they're applying their public accommodation law to provide message-based protections, just like the court did in Hurley, following the same test that's being articulated today, and they've been doing it successfully. Yes, there are difficult line-drawing questions, but those are in every speech case, whether it's sleeping in the park or putting on an armband. The court doesn't have to resolve every single one of them, but we do have the rules and we need the court to provide guidance Again, reaffirming public accommodation laws cannot compel speech creators, whether that's artistic expression with symbols or pure speech. And just so I make sure I understood your colloquy with uh, Justice Barrett, um, the objections to compelled speech here on religious grounds could include, in fact, do include some objections with respect to certain heterosexual marriages, that there are certain heterosexual unions that your client would not speak in f toward either. Is that correct? Certainly, and that's in the stipulated facts in terms of she declines messages based on the message, and she has declined other projects based on the message that have nothing to do with same-sex marriage. So the question isn't who, it's what. 
always. Thank you. Justice Gorsuch. I think at the end of two hours, we are now in the afternoon, by the way. Good afternoon. Uh, that w there, there's actually radical agreement on, on how we should analyze this case legally. Tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, I, I disagree, no, but what? go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even given me a chance. <laughs> that that, that what, what would be impermissible is discrimination on the basis of status, but what would be permissible is, is refusing service because of a disagreement about views. So I guess I, what I, the reason I disagreed at first is to say I think there is general agreement that that's about the right outcome. That that's to about get to, the right way to think about this case. But great difference of opinion about how legally you get there, uh, and that leads uh, but, to difference but, of opinion but, about but, but, how but, you but, answer it. I, I, I was about you just steal my thunder, counsel. <laughs> you think this is a status case. The other side thinks it's a, a viewpoint case. Is that fair, too? I, I wouldn't say that. I acknowledge that this is a status and a message case. Okay, it's both, yes. in your view. I'm sorry. Whereas they would say it's a message case. Correct. But to think about it, the status versus message is, I just want to make sure we all agree that that's the right way to think about this case. Correct. And can I explain why we think that's sure. the right way to think about sure. the case? Because we think the first question is, is the burden that's being imposed on Ms. Smith incidental to a content-neutral regulation of conduct that says you can't turn people away because of status? So right. to us, the first question is, is what she's doing status-based discrimination? Right. And if the answer is yes, then the burden is incidental, even if she thinks it affects no, her I, message. I, 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 I got that about an hour ago, but thank you. I, I, I apologize. Okay. Now. Um, the, the, the other question I had is, in your view, this is status-based, but Justice Barrett's hypothetical of the inverse situation is message-based. I wouldn't describe it as the inverse situation because I didn't understand the hypothetical to say that the campus print website design company was turning people away because of their status. I understood it to be turning them away because they wanted to say things that the company would not say. That's one way of describing it, or one might describe it as turning away those with traditionalist views of marriage based on their religious beliefs, conservative Christians, for example. So I guess I just disagree with that, Justice Gorsuch. I think the way we answer any status-based discrimination question is we change the protected status, we hold everything else constant, and we ask, does the outcome change? And in Ms. Smith's case, you change the protected status, it's you know Jack and Taylor, and you ask, will she make the website? Except for that runs into all those stipulated facts in which the plaintiff has said repeatedly that she will serve everyone and she would deny everyone this kind of website. She, but denying everyone whether Everyone, it, it's, regardless it's, of status. Right, but it, right? It's, it's race discrimination to say I won't serve interracial, I won't create inter, what, what websites for interracial marriage, and I won't sell them even to a white wedding planner. That's still race it discrimination. Can be, it can be status or it can be message, and we have to figure that out in this case, right? What I, but the way you would figure it out is, does, has Colorado validly defined it as status-based discrimination? And I think the answer that the court gave at pages 1727 to 1729 of Masterpiece is yes. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Justice. We also have stipulations from Colorado that the plaintiff is willing to work with all people, regardless of classifications such as race, creed, sexual orientation, and gender, right? In some respects, yes, but no, that, that is the stipulation. I, I, I just read it. You, you disagree with that? The stipulated fact in this case? That is stipulated, but it's also clear that she will not provide any wedding website for a same-sex couple. She, well, for a same-sex wedding, and she for wouldn't provide wedding, it to yes. a heterosexual couple either, right? But that's still discrimination within the meaning of just that. as she wouldn't sell a, a website that celebrates a heterosexual union that she disagreed with to anyone, regardless of their sexual orientation, right? That may be right, Justice Gorsuch, but I think Masterpiece couldn't have been clearer in saying that declining to sell goods or services, even expressive goods and services, for a same-sex wedding is a form of status-based discrimination properly within the scope of public okay. accommodation. On, on that, I just want to make sure I understand. Do we agree as well that this, is, that this work that the plan performs is expressive in nature? We do. Okay. Thank you. And if it's expressive, what, what about my photograph uh, hypothetical? So I didn't belabor this at the beginning, Justice Jackson, but your photograph hypothetical is exactly the sort of implication of the arguments that petitioners are advancing that are of concern to the United States. We really do think it's very difficult if you accept her principle, is it speech and does the speaker believe the message has changed, to say that someone who is doing that would not be entitled under her theory to an exemption from the public accommodations laws. And we think that's a very sweeping accommodation that's inconsistent with the court's admonition in Masterpiece Cake Shop that any sorts of carve-outs in these areas have to be carried 
carefully cabined to avoid undermining the government's compelling interest in ensuring that all Americans have equal access to the public market. And so 